how do you let go of what no longer serves you? Your energy and your intuition is always there to tell you when it's time to let something go. Do not waste a year of your life spinning in that negativity energy vortex. Your body knows. Your spirit knows. All right, everybody, get ready. We've talked about the fact that in order to be a happier person and create the life that you deserve, you have to learn how to let go of the things that no longer serve you. Number two, you have learned that letting go is a natural and important part of your life cycle. Whether you need to let go of friendships or a job or a place that you live or habits or the friend group that you hang out with. Letting go allows you to create room for new growth, new seasons, new chapters, new adventures. And it's only through that growth and those new things that you're allowing yourself to experience that you will come into your full potential and you will unlock the magic in your life. So letting go is not a bad thing. It's a really good thing. It's a great skill. In fact, you know, I, I notice in the DMs a lot of you go, you know, but aren't I a quitter if I quit? No. Winners quit all the time. I actually think it's a losing thing to do, to hold on to things that no longer serve you. One aspect of being a winner is knowing where to put your focus and knowing when something should end. And so absolutely, winners quit all the time because when you're quitting or saying no to something right now, that's actually a yes to something else. And when you frame letting go to be not a no, not a breakup, not something negative, but letting go is letting something else open up in your life. Letting go is a beginning. Letting go is about possibility. Letting go is about the magic that's ahead. It's about the future. And so letting go is so important. And I want you to embrace it. The third thing that we talked about is that you have natural intelligence inside of you. And that may sound all woo-woo. This is science. And we're going to unpack this all the time because I'm going to keep coming back to the fact that you have instincts, you have hard wiring, your gut is trying to tell you something. And one of the fastest ways to read that natural intelligence is to pay attention to your energy. You have felt what I'm talking about. You know when things are off. You know when you feel depleted. You know when you naturally click with somebody. That is data that matters because it's data that helps you make the changes, the small changes that improve your life. The fourth thing that you've clearly learned is that the best things in life are reciprocal. Even volunteering. Volunteering is a reciprocal act. You want to know why? When you volunteer and you volunteer your time, you volunteer your energy, you donate money, you always receive something in return, don't you? You feel this sense of meaning. You feel connected to something larger and more important than your day-to-day -day struggles. That is a reciprocal energy exchange. You donate money, you volunteer your time and effort and resources, you get something invaluable back. That's reciprocal. That's why it adds meaning. The best friendships, reciprocal. You, you pour in, they pour back. Same thing with your romantic relationships. And all you need to do is to think about that one person you chased, right? That you're constantly going after, should I text them? Are they all the energy going at them? And yeah, maybe you got an orgasm back, but then mostly you got negativity because you're constantly insecure, constantly worried, no idea where you stood, always stressed out about it, thinking about it, distracted by it. That is not a reciprocal relationship. That is an obsession that's unhealthy for you. So there are things in life that are really hard, that take a lot of energy. Things that I hate doing. Things like exercise. I hate exercising. I hate getting out of bed. But once I push through that resistance, right? You learned all about this in the episode called Motivation is Garbage. Once you get the activation energy and you do the thing, what happens after you exercise? You get 
a reciprocal return of positive energy. You feel great about yourself. The same thing's true about my husband who doesn't drink right now. It takes a lot of effort. At least it did in the beginning. And it was really hard because he had been drinking for a long time. But even though it's hard, it's so worth it. Why? Because there is this reciprocal return. You start to feel so good about yourself. You sleep better at night. You have clarity. You have pride. You're, you're aligned with your values. And that values word is really important because when it becomes even more nuanced, your values is how you're going to create a return of energy in really hard situations. So I can give you two examples. Any one of you who is caring for an aging parent knows how difficult that is. Any one of you that has a child or a partner who is struggling with mental health issues knows how difficult that is. You also know that you are pouring your energy into caring for this person. And it can be very depleting because the person that is sick or the person that's struggling doesn't often give back what you're pouring in. It also may be physically demanding because you're working all the time, plus you're doing this at night. And so you are tired. It's a fact. So how in those situations do you create this exchange of energy? The secret is values. Tap into your values in order to create positive energy back and to help you rise above the day-to-day stresses that are temporary. Because the truth is, if you tap into your values, it makes you feel like an amazing human being, knowing that you are there for your mom. It makes you feel like a good person, knowing that you are a compassionate caregiver that is helping your child or your partner through a really difficult chapter. When you start to feel depleted, Remind yourself, lift your gaze, raise your gaze, and look out to the future and feel proud of yourself for acting in alignment with the kind of person you know yourself to be, even though it's hard. That's how you create a positive energy return for yourself in those situations where somebody either doesn't have it to give back or the situation itself is really physically demanding. I'll give you another example. Um, I have a friend that is going through a hard time and has been for a long time. And I continue to pour into this friendship, even though I don't get a lot back. Why? The reason why is I get a lot back knowing that if I were in this situation, I would want a friend of mine to stay around and pour into me. And that is what drives me. That creates that energy exchange. And so you have within you the ability to do things that feel hard, like exercising or stopping drinking or staying sober or changing your habits or making cold calls. You can do those things that feel difficult. And trust me, you're going to feel proud of yourself, which is why they return on the investment of effort. And you can do things that are draining, And I promise you, they will come back to you with energy because it makes you feel good about yourself. And I bet you can think of four or five things that you're doing right now that are hard that you're not even giving yourself credit for. You should be proud of yourself because you're a good person. You keep showing up. And that is something you need to celebrate. That's something that you need to feel energized about. And in those times when it gets really hard, remind yourself, this too shall pass. That what goes up also comes down just like when you're hiking a trail on a mountain, that this is a season of your life. And holding on, holding on to what doesn't serve you is going to drain you. It's going to kill off your happiness. But finding ways to bring energy back in in those situations that are aligned with your values and what you want, that's a power move. Now, to close, there are two rules that I want you to start practicing right now because these are the two big energy drainers, okay? And you can start today. Energy drainer number one, any time you're complaining. That's right. Complaining to yourself is a complete energy drain, period. 
we were heading here to the studio. There was a ton of traffic. We were running late. I could feel the negative wave of stress coming. I could feel the depleted the depletion coming. I could feel it all happening. I could feel the thought the thought starting to go. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. That is when you are sucking your own energy dry. I started complaining. Should have got up early. Should have done this. Should stop complaining. Stop complaining about that job you don't like. Stop complaining about the traffic. Stop complaining about your partner. Stop complaining about your weight. Stop complaining about the things in your life. Because here's the truth. With a little bit of effort and a little better attitude and a little positive energy, you can freaking change anything because you can take the actions that change anything. And so instead of bitching about the job, get busy tomorrow morning and start looking for a new one. I dare you. Try to go 24 hours and not complain about anything today. It's next to impossible. I would love to hear from you if you take this challenge on. Seriously, I would. Just tag me on social media. Tell me how the 24-hour rule is going of no complaining. Rule number two, stop trying to control other people. Stop it. I was at an event in Las Vegas with my friend, not Las Vegas. I was at an event in Los Angeles with my friend Kathy Heller. And we took a bunch of questions from the audience. And this particular question from uh, one woman, I can't stop thinking about. How do you stop controlling your friends? You stop. That's how you do it. When you catch yourself trying to control someone, and then you let go of the desire to change them, and you redirect all of that angst and energy toward caring, listening, supporting, creating this reciprocal exchange of allowing them to show up exactly as they are, you get connection back. Your attempt to control somebody blocks connection. It blocks the exchange between people. And here's one more thing about letting go when it comes to relationships. Maybe sometimes the purpose that some people play in your life is simply to teach you how to let go. Let's go back to the top of Haystack Mountain in southern Vermont because our friend Mel Robbins, she has huffed and she has puffed and step by step she has made it to the top of Haystack Mountain. And there's something interesting about that. It's an example of how putting in the effort, throwing in the energy and doing things that may be hard, they may be a struggle, they may make you pant and turn bright red in the face. They may make you uh, feel like maybe you can't do this. That's good. That is so good. Because when you push yourself to do something out of your comfort zone, that is positive. And what do you get back? You get back all kinds of positive energy in return. You feel pride. You feel happy. You grow a little bit. You get a great view. And speaking of view, Mel has something that she wants to say to you to wrap this up. The other amazing thing about hiking and uh, being out here in the woods and climbing on top of a mountain is that once you actually get to the top, your whole brain distorts how painful it was to cross the bridge, hike the trail, and go step by step to get where you wanted to go. Um, But it just goes to show you with just a little bit of consistent effort and an optimistic attitude, inch by inch, step by step, you can make anything happen. Especially if you make room for new things to come into your life. I can't wait to hear what you've been inspired to let go of in this season. I would love to hear what tools made the most difference from you. If there's somebody in your life that is gripping hard or holding on to things that no longer serve them, please share this episode because together, You've not only made this one of the number one ranking podcasts in the entire world before we even launched, but you're also helping us impact and change people's lives around the world every time you share these episodes or you bring these tools into your life and you use them to make your own experience a little happier, a little more fulfilling. And that has a ripple effect on the people that matter most around you. All right. I love you, I believe in you, and um, oh, uh, our dog's barking at somebody, YOLO!